welcome you to another edition of TV Africa News. This is Africa Today. My name is Najma Lima, but first are the headlines. Zake removed as Parliament Commissioner ordered to apologize to Deputy Speaker Among. Dozens killed in clashes at Abye, a disputed border area with Sudan. Leaders are Black's power, Chetume in home victory. I want welcome once again now the news in detail. Miti and municipality MP Francis Zake was on Thursday removed as a parliament commission after being found guilty of misconduct over his abusive treats directed towards the deputy speaker of parliament, Anita Among. We have more. Honorable Zake was sent to Parliament's Committee on Rules, Privileges and Discipline for investigation and on Thursday, the committee here person Anibugweri County MOP Abudu Kantuntu presented a report that found the legislator guilty of misconduct. Consequently, the House adopted the majority report as authored by Parliament's Committee on Rules, Privileges and Discipline. Later, Luchiga County MOP Roland Indio Mujenyi proposed that the House amend the Majority Committee report to find that Zake is unfit to hold the position of the Commissioner of Parliament and be relieved of the duties to safeguard the sanctity of the House. Following the Majority Report, a section of opposition legislators led by Butambala District Woman MOP Aisha Kabanda disagreed with the Canton Tools Committee. She insisted that Zake is innocent but urged that the legislator apologizes. However, Parliament did not adopt the minority report. Consequently, Badegela Yibi Division legislator Martin Ojala Mapenduzi moved a motion under Section 5 of the Administration of Parliament Act for a resolution to remove Zake from Parliamentary Commission. Shortly before the vote, a section of MPs led by the leader of opposition walked out of parliament in protest. However, this never stopped parliament to continue with its business and consequently, a total of 155 legislators voted to remove Zake from the parliamentary commission, whereas only two voted against the move. Consequently, Zake was removed as a commissioner of parliament and was also ordered to apologize to the Deputy Speaker of Parliament within a period of one week. For TVFK News, Omulangira Kalima reporting. The Minister for Lands, Housing and Urban Development, Honorable Judith Nabakova, has asked resident city commissioners to be vigilant about the ongoing illegal evictions and provide evidence based on information collected on all evicted related matters in order to implement a presidential directive on illegal evictions. Nalugo reports. While addressing journalists at the Government Media Center in Kampala, Minister for Lands, Housing and Urban Development, Honorable Judith Nawakova, said the District Security Committee, chaired by RDCs, must adjust their terms of reference to include implementing the Presidential Directive. The District Security Committee must ensure no land eviction takes place, especially on unregistered all land retainers on it. All necessary guidelines as stated must be followed. One, to advise the Minister for Land on all eviction related matters reported in their respective districts. Two, to comply with implementing the presidential directive or the presidential ban on land evictions. Three, to monitor, inspect, and report on a monthly basis the land acquired by large-scale land investors in order to ensure that land being taken over is not occupied by tenants or customary land owners.
Now Akoba reminded the resident city commissioners about their role under the land sector. Victims of land evictions are therefore advised to reach out to their local leaders for protection against destroying their livelihoods. Find your RDCs and tell them about those threatening you with evictions so that necessary action is taken. And finally, thank His Excellency the President for this important directive that strengthens the work in the Ministry of Lands. In a February 28, 2022 letter to the Prime Minister Robin Anabanja, Museven used his powers under Article 98.1 and 99.1 of the Constitution that enjoins him to ensure good governance and protect the Constitution to stop any evictions that are not given green light by the district security committees. President Yoram Seven issued tough guidelines in which he banned all land evictions all over the country that are carried out without the consent of the respective district security committees. Nalgo Muyingo, Africa Today. The High Court in PG has directed UNRWA to pay only shillings 4.6 million instead of shillings 500 million to Iman as compensation for cutting down a purported spiritual tree to pave way for the construction of the Busega PG Expressway. One of the members of the Rugavi clan recently refused to allow UNRWA to cut down a tree they said is sacred without paying them 500 million Ghana shillings as compensation for allowing the 300 billion Ghana shillings Busega MPG Expressway pass through their piece of land that has the tree. The same has since stalled the construction process of the road after one of the clan members, Hussein Katamba, went to court challenging Yunra's move to draw plans of constructing a road to go through his piece of land, which also has the spiritual tree named Nabukaru. However, on Thursday, Mpiji High Court Judge Anthony Oyuko Ojuko ruled that there was no evidence to show how long the so-called cultural site, which also has the say tree, has been in existence. The judge ruled that the evidence provided in no way proved that the said land was a cultural site belonging to the Rugave clan and had been in existence since the 1800s. In his suit, Katamba asked the court to order Yunra pay him 500 million Ghana shillings in compensation before cutting down the tree and seeing the road pass through his piece of land. However, during the hearing, Yunra and the Attorney General's lawyers urged that, basing on the location of the land in relation to urban centers, economic activity in the area, physical and geographical factors, population density and vicinity, to services such as water, electricity and roads, Katamba deserves only 4.6 million Ghana shillings as compensation for using his piece of land and cutting down his tree. For TV Africa News, Omulangira Kalima reporting. Let's take a quick break. We will be right back. <music> Welcome back. You're still watching TV African News, The Right to Know. Dozens of people have been killed in an outbreak of intercommunal violence in a disputed oil region in South Sudan, according to the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs and the local official. We have more on this report. According to Ocha, Fighting in the oil-rich border region of Abay, disputed between Sudan and South Sudan, has left 36 people dead as of March 6th, an unknown number injured and 50,000 displaced. Fighting in the area, which began on February 10th, intensified in early March, according to Ocha, which added that humanitarian operations in areas affected by the fighting have been suspended and aid workers have been relocated to safe areas. A bay caught between Sudan and fledgingly South Sudan has been a flashpoint between the two countries 
Since the South gained independence in July 2011, South Sudan separated from its northern neighbor in 2011 following a peace treaty that ended a 22-year civil war. The region has also long experienced tensions between Ngok Dinka community and Miseria pastorists who cross the area in search of grazing land. Triple S spokesman Ajak Deng say two deadly attacks were carried out over the weekend by Miseria herders and members of the Sudanese armed forces equipped with heavy weapons. A bay has been under UN protection since South Sudan's independence. The United Nations Interim Force deployed there and also called for an end to the violence. Moving on, a South African judge Raymond Zondo was appointed on Thursday as head of the Constitutional Court, the country's highest court. Justice Zondo was previously in charge of South Africa's inquiry into state corruption under President Jacob Zuma, who ruled the country between 2009 and 2018. The appointment of Justice Raymond Zondo by Head of State Cyril Ramaphosa follows lengthy televised hearings of the four candidates that took place during February. The judge was already a deputy president of the court. Zondo will take office on April 1st when the commission he chairs will prepare its fourth and final report on state corruption under Zuma. The court has always maintained that Zuma must comply with the commission's orders, including imprisonment. Zuma's imprisonment for refusing to testify in July 2021 triggered protests that degenerated into riots and looting that left more than 350 people dead. Away from that, the Malian government announced on Wednesday evening the opening of an investigation into the murder of several Mauritanian nationals on its territory, but assured that for the moment there was nothing to accuse Malian soldiers. Mauritania raised its voice against its neighbor on Tuesday, accusing its army of recurrent criminal acts on its soil against Mauritanians following the disappearance of a number of them in the border area. Mauritanian authorities did not specify the nature of these acts. A Mauritanian MP spoke of at least 15 dates in the border area south of Adel, Baguru in eastern Mauritania and sound recordings saturated on social media networks attributed to eyewitnesses but not authenticated spoke of the disappearance of some 30 Mauritanians accusing Malian soldiers. In a statement issued on Wednesday evening, Malian government spokesperson Kano Abdallah Maiga confirmed that there was talk of assassination without giving a number. He strongly condemns these criminal acts intended to undermine the excellent quality of relations between their two countries. It reports that the head of the Malian junta, Kano Asimi Goita, has exchanged with Mauritanian President Muhammad Oudu Sheikh El Guzani. Kano Goita ordered to open an investigation and decided to send a high-level mission to Nokoti as soon as possible. At the time, the Marian government also announced the opening of an investigation and assured that nothing implicated the Marian army. Guinea's most representative parties threatened on Wednesday to call for demonstrations if the ruling junta keeps delaying the return of civilians to power while humiliating their leaders. These parties have come out of their previous restraint towards the junta which took power by force in September 2021. According to parties in Guinea, it is clear that the junta is moving away from the rules and principles of the rule of law and voluntarily dragging its feet in carrying out the necessary steps to return to constitutional order. The head of the junta, Kanuma Madi Dumbuya, who became president on 1st October, has pledged to hand over power to elected civilians at the end of a transitional period. But he refuses to be dictated by a deadline. The parties say that a code for the repression of economic offences set up by the authorities has become an instrument to disqualify troublesome political leaders. These parties call for a permanent framework for dialogue to discuss the time frame for the return of civilians to power and demand respect for the law and human dignity. The militarized seizure of power was welcomed by a population exasperated by poverty, corruption and the repression of the last few years of President Alpha Conde. 
However, six months later, it is the second statement in a few days to agitate the threat of demonstrations after that of a collective that orchestrated months of protest in 2019 to 2020. This mobilization had led to dozens of deaths in a country accustomed to violent protests. Let's just again take a quick break. We will be right back. Welcome back. You're still watching TV African News, the right to know. In our business and news today, South Africa is the most unequal country in the world with a race playing a key role in a society where 10% of the population owns more than 80% of the wealth, according to a World Bank report released on Wednesday. Let's take a look. According to the Washington-based institution report titled Inequality in Southern Africa, South Africa, the largest country in the Southern African Customs Union, is the most unequal country in the world, ranking first among 164 countries. Previous reports have placed the country at the top of the list. The World Bank says that 30 years after the end of apartheid, race remained a key factor in South Africa's high levels of inequality due to its impact on education and the labor market. It added that ethnicity contributes 41% to income inequality and 30% in education. The organization say that Africa's leading industrial neighbors that make up the Southern African Customs Union, Botswana, Eswatini, Lesotho and Namibia all top the list of most unequal countries, making the region the worst in the world. Gender also plays an important role in the region. Women earn on average 30% less than men with equivalent levels of education. The unequal distribution of agricultural land is also a factor, especially in rural areas. In Namibia, 70% of the 39.7 million hectares of commercial farmland is still owned by Namibians of European origin, according to the World Bank. The report produced before the COVID-19 crisis, which has exacerbated poverty, uses the Gini coefficient, an indicator of income inequality to rank countries. In our health news today, Nigeria announced a surge in COVID-19 infections a day after registering the lowest daily figure recorded since the start of the pandemic. On Monday, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control announced only two cases had been recorded in the country. On Tuesday, the health authorities recorded 118 new infections. The surge in the number of COVID-19 cases is partly explained by the arrival last Friday of 772 evacuees from Ukraine currently at war with Russia. Of these, at least 60 tested positive for coronavirus. The death toll still stands at 3,142, while the infection toll has increased to 254,777 cases. Our students, many of whom have limited resources, were forced to flee the Ukraine into neighboring countries in the wake of the raging armed conflict. African citizens are among the thousands of people evacuated from the besieged Ukrainian city of Sami. Hundreds of students from the continent had been stuck in the city since Russian forces invaded.
And in our sports and news today, the top clubs in the FUFA Big League are definitely fighting for the three promotion slots with the lower cluster aggressively desisting a relegation to the regional leagues. As the final band of the 2021-2022 start times FUFA Big League comes by, the competition has intensified among the clubs. In the, letter, in the latest results, current table leaders, Blacks Power, recovered from Islam, suffered when they lost 2-0 away to Ndeja University by overcoming Maroons 2-0 at the Akibua Stadium in Wira. At the Nachisunga Saza Playground, Chetume piped visiting Ndeja University with January recruit Sharif Saka on target in the 21st minute. Elsewhere, a ten man Luero United edged in Bali, best Kataka 2 1 at the Kosovo playground in Luero. Maida beat bottom placed Nyamichobola 2 0 at King George IV Memorial Stadium in Itororo with Geoffrey Selunkuma on target twice. Chitala and visiting pro line shared the spoils during a four goal stalemate played at the Masindi Municipal Stadium. Former Express midfielder Rogers Lukuya and Charlie Stromu Hendo scored for Chitada. Whiskey Brian Omoni and Hakim Chuanuka netted the goals for the visitors. March the 17 will come on Sunday, 13th March 2022, with five matches at various venues. Table leaders, Black's Power, has another home duel against second place to cheer to me at the Akibua Memorial Stadium in Rira City. Wounded Maroons shall host Luelo United at the Lakeside Prison Stadium in Ruzira. Three clubs shall be promoted directly to the Uganda Premier League and the three demoted to the respective regional leagues. For TVFK News, Omulangira Kalima reporting. That was the news. Thank you for always keeping it TV Africa. Please do stay tuned. More programming coming your way.